Welcome back to another week of My Team Stories. This week we are heading over to Western Australia to speak with Alicia McMullen, who I've honestly been fangirling all week, Alicia, and I found her in and oh my gosh, I have just been like scrolling through being like, I cannot wait to chat, I cannot wait to meet her. So if you could just start off by introducing yourself, maybe the school that you went to and a little bit about your Wiley journey. Sure. Um uh, oh gosh, where to begin? <laughs> Isn't that such a big question? Um, I'm in fourth year at uni at the moment. I'm doing education uh, for primary teaching because I'm very passionate about um, young people. Um, I am obsessed with um, connection with others and uh, reflecting on uh, your own journey um, and just kind of like learning a little bit more about yourself. Um, I love to picnic, I love dancing, I love um, writing and drawing and yeah, anything fun and enjoyable, I guess, yeah. Oh, I love it already. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Let's talk a little bit about like, the journey with Wiley and kind of how you got to know Wiley. Mm, okay, um, so I was head girl at my school at Penhouse College in 2016 um, and I was invited to the student leadership conference um, over Greece. Um, and I think everyone who has ever attended and whoever will attend can definitely um, agree with that. Um, so yeah, I went to the conference as a participant first um, and then went back in 2018 as a mentor and then 2019 as a guru. If you were to describe yourself in three words to someone who doesn't know you, what were the three kind of words that you would use? Creative. Um warm and engaged i think yeah great words so if you've been watching why team stories we've kind of been asking like the same like five questions every week so my first question mm. for you is probably going to be my favorite because i haven't been to perth i don't think for maybe like 15 years so if you were a tour guide in your own hometown home city for a day where would you take us and what would we do together okay oh in perth all right well I hear a lot of people talk about how boring Perth is, but I disagree completely because I love Perth. Um, I think it's fantastic, but um, I would take you first of all to my favorite spot, which is the South Perth foreshore. Um, it's so, so beautiful. It's um, like stretch of grass, lots of trees, and you, you can just look over the um, river and see the city, like sunrise, daytime, nighttime, anytime is beautiful. So I'd definitely go there. And then we'd probably catch the ferry over to the city um, to Elizabeth Key, which is um, like, I guess, our big tourist attraction place of the centre of the city. But yeah, I really like it. Um, and probably to Kings Park as well, because that's definitely a, a classic one. And I heard it's bigger than Central Park in New York, which is very interesting. Yeah. Oh, great day. Great day. <laughs> um, my next question with that one is where would we eat? Like, do you have a favorite restaurant or like somewhere that you want to try? Um, I'm so bad with taking people to good food places because I would just go anywhere to eat. Well, first of all, definitely have to go to Gelare. Um, that's one of my favorite places. It's ice cream and they do the best waffles. Um, but probably for like lunch or brunch kind of vibes, I'd probably go to a cafe near my house called Little Banksia because that is a very popular one and people come from all over Perth just to um, eat there, which is really cool. Um, so yeah, we'd go that, I reckon. I love brunch, so that's like the best way to <laughs> love a good brunch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, brunch is the best. I could eat brunch for every meal, but then like, is it brunch anymore? Am I just eating breakfast food? Yeah, maybe, but we'll still call it brunch. <laughs> yeah, great. Um, my next question is, what is a lesson that you're currently learning or processing? Um, I have been reading a book at the moment called The Secret. I don't know if you've heard of it, um, by Rhonda Byrne. And it's been really interesting and enlightening to me and bringing about this concept that I've kind of, you know, um, I was aware of before, but you know, when you read a book, you really uh, begin to understand it. Um, and it's the idea that we're in control of how we experience everything. Um, and basically, well, for me, this extends from just like being positive about things. Um, I guess I'm a massive believer in the fact that the stories that we tell ourselves 
can really change the way that we show up to situations. Um, and so for me, I've been exploring that idea of um, being intentional about interactions and going to places and um, experiencing things. So for me, this might mean like on the way to um, even like a dance class, I'll set two intentions, um, which maybe might stem from something that I'd like to improve on from last dance class. Um, and this could be like, I want to make sure that I say hello to everyone who I um, who I know and maybe meet two people who I don't know. Um, and also maybe the second intention of just like breathing when I'm feeling nervous or maybe like socially awkward, I just like breathe out and just remember that everyone's here to have fun. Um, so I guess being intentional about interacting with people and um, how do you show up for things? Because I really think that the things that you tell yourself um, and who you are and you really do adopt those, um, those attitudes and those beliefs. Um, and I guess in that sense, I've been thinking about this recently a lot because um, I've recently joined TikTok and I was thinking about the algorithm, how, um, you know, what you engage with, it comes up more. Um, and I kind of just had this enlightening moment the other day of this is actually like real life because the algorithm for real life, the more you engage with whatever it may be, um, it, it comes to you more. Um, so I've been trying to challenge myself to um, not only with what I engage with externally, but also the thoughts that I think all the time. I kind of challenge them and um, make sure that they're the kinds of things that I'd want to bring more into my life. So yeah, that's something I've been exploring recently. <laughs> On that note, what is something that has made you smile this week? Yeah, for me, I guess a lot of it is uh, like the things that I do every week. Uh, I make sure that I really do enjoy. So even just going to dance class, uh, which I've been doing quite a lot recently, just the vibes there and the people and how encouraging they are. Um, and sometimes I, I think everyone has moments where they just stop and look around and realize where they are. And it just like, it's like a wave of overwhelming gratitude. And that has made me feel so good recently and just really taking in those moments. Um, yeah, I guess I've just had so many of those moments recently and I think that's pretty cool. Um, so I'm really enjoying that, yeah. My next question is, what is something that you must achieve during the next two years and why? This one's a little bit tricky for me just because I'm quite a go with the flow kind of person. As much as I love goals, I think it's obviously very important to not be flexible but be open to all the different paths that you can take um but for me i'm graduating halfway through next year so that means i'll hopefully get some um like maybe relief jobs for teaching and um i'd love to hit the ground running um so i've been um looking into doing some interviews with um primary teachers who are inspiring to me um, and who might be really good role models or mentors um so I think I'd really like to collect a lot of, um, I guess, information and tips from them so that I can um, be the best teacher that I can be from the start. Because, I mean, you may as well learn from people who have already made mistakes and, you know, who have been on the same journey. So I'd love to do a lot of um, interviews with um, primary teachers who inspire me. Um, and then I'd also really like to start a teacher blog. So whether that's on Instagram or um, something like that. But yeah, I think if I do a lot of interviews with um, inspiring teachers and then um, start up my blog, I think that would make me a very happy graduate and I could um, really focus on my professional goals in that sense. Yeah. My final like, kind of big question is, you said that you've like volunteered with y -Lead a little bit and obviously when we go to schools we do heaps of like really cool different activities and sometimes they involve Wiley textures and like you know the classic like bring out the packet choose your favorite color Love it. <laughs> right don't we all <laughs> if you were in a packet of Wiley textures which color would you be and why i think i would be that maroon color you know that color that's like not pink but not red yeah, I think I'd be that one. Um, I was going to say orange because that's my favourite colour, but I think I'd I'd more resonate personally with the maroon texture. Um, I think it's it's quite passionate and fiery and um, and quite bold, but it still has that sense of um, earthy groundedness. So I think I think I'd be that colour. 
That's a cool question. That's a great answer. <laughs> That's so good. Um, so the next part of this is kind of changing into our fast five. So our fast five are basically just like five questions where you answer like the first thing that comes to mind or the first thing that you think of. So, okay. uh, yeah, get ready. Pressure's on. Right, I'm ready. <laughs> um, for one, your favorite food? Uh, potato salad. <laughs> Next destination? Uh, Bant, Alberta in Canada. Mm, beautiful. That one's on my list. Your favorite band or artist? Oh, I have to say the 1975. My favorite band since year seven. <laughs> oh, Soul Sisters. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Um, your favorite movie? Oh, okay. I have three. Can I say them? Yeah, go for it. Okay. Shawshank Redemption, Titanic. Oh, I've got four. About Time and Toy Story. <laughs> Great mix in there. I love it. Last one, your favorite color? Uh, yeah, orange. I love anything warm and sunny and fun. <laughs> Oh, I love that. I feel like that's like exactly you as a person. Like if you were <laughs> a color, it would be orange. Warm, funny, yeah. welcoming. Mm, love it. So I'm going to finish, as I said, by like asking a few like kind of open-ended questions. So the next question that I kind of want to ask is if you could tell us about Girls for Girls. Mm. Okay, so uh, Girls for Girls is um, a little... I guess charity group that my sister and I started a couple of years ago. I think it was 2017 we started it. Um, and initially we set the intention of creating a space for young girls in the community to come together and um, I guess socialize, but also develop themselves and engage in workshops and things. Um, because my sister and I are on a scholarship at Curtin and they do monthly um, workshops and these workshops are like um, for job skills and um, um, just quite professional um, self-development kind of um, kind of vibes and we thought I think I mean it's all good and well to extend those who are um, maybe quite successful in a particular area of their lives but for the girls who don't have um, that platform where they um, where they're invited to explore those areas um, like they, they don't have anything so we thought let's make like this open group where girls can come in and we can hold workshops like that and then maybe um, a couple of girls in the community will actually find that they really like it um, so we started this group um, it started really small and it is um, it's quite local and um, small and intimate so um, that's how we like it at the moment um, and a few girls have jumped on board and we basically have a membership group. Um, so we meet monthly um, to, we run workshops, we do DIY sessions, we do craft, um, and then we also, um, I guess, give out volunteering opportunities or kind of spread the awareness of them so um, girls can jump on board and um, volunteer together. Um, so yeah, that's been really good. And it's been a way for girls who maybe don't have as many outside of school connections to come together or girls who are in university or who have moved um, to Perth from um, the country to um, study and they might not have many friends and connections. So it's been a really good way for girls to um, connect and uh, make some new friends. Um, but also my sister and I have really enjoyed um, organizing and planning content so we've done some goal setting workshops we've done vision boards we've done um, time management and um, professional um, personal development things like that um, and then we're in the process of planning a four-week challenge which is super exciting um, we're hoping to get it will be open to anyone um, and girls can jump on board to join in the challenge which will include things to holistically improve yourself um, and it'll be like an accountability group to check in on each other and support each other and have some guest speakers to do some Zoom calls and yeah, it was super exciting stuff. But yeah, it's been a really fun process and we've definitely learned a lot. We're kind of talking to people in the wild who might have art or an idea like this to kind of involve their community or maybe the idea of writing a blog. What sort of advice would you give them in terms of like starting it up or even sharing their artwork or their content? Yeah, I think everyone would have a different reason to do that, whether it's just like artistic expression or um, to help other people. Um, but obviously I think it's important to ensure that everything that you do 
comes from the heart or comes from a um a place where you want to feel proud of that's why you started it um or making sure that you don't feel like you have to change your content or your artwork to um, suit a particular group of people or to please everyone. I think that's um, something that's important for people who are thinking about maybe going public um, about their their artwork or their blogs or their thoughts. Um, it's you're not never going to please anyone. Um, so I think just going with whatever you feel is right and targeting that particular audience who who will love and appreciate that content then um, invest wholeheartedly in that area and don't feel like you have to you know um, be the jack of all trades and please everyone yeah yeah thank you That's a great message and definitely something that I hadn't really considered like obviously putting your art or your content or anything out into the world there's always kind of the prospect of what's going to come back to you so yeah, I love how you articulated that. It was really, really lovely. Thank you. Gosh, I feel like I could honestly sit here and chat to you all day. Thank you so much for tuning in and watching. If you do have any other Y teamers in the community that you would like to recommend, please, please, please let us know. But otherwise, thank you so much, Alicia. And I cannot wait to hear more from you. Thank you so much, Izzy. It's been so, so fun and such a pleasure.